so um, there's going to be a little tiny bit of my commentary in here, but I think um, what I what I heard over the presentations and the discussion was, um, again, iterating back to the last um, session of knowledge generation through a rapid learning system. I mean, we need to be able to learn more about variants from their phenotype, from the clinical outcomes. I mean, so this feeds into the interpretation of variants and the actionability of those variants. So that's a, a broad, overarching comment um, that I heard. Um, guidelines, and, and then there are various areas where I've heard recommendations. In guidelines, we need to feedback information on the use of the guidelines to modify or refine those variant interpretation guidelines, like almost a closed-loop decision system so that you, you know where the guidelines are falling short. Um, and then also look at the guidelines that are, they're not addressing certain issues, like um, low penetrance or mild alleles or um, risk alleles, and how do you start thinking about those other kinds of guidelines. We need database improvements, reporting recommendations um, to that include the evidence used for variant classification as well as the annotation justification. Um, and how we move to databases with case level data is a very important next step. Um, I think that's in ClinGen, but CSER also could um, be very important in this because you're looking at the total picture of the patient which is very clinical in a database rather than just the variant and the interpretation of that information. Um, and then how will sites be supported in updating information in databases? I mean, if you're creating these databases for interpretation, what incentives do providers have to keep that data updated? Around phenotyping, that was another large area that I heard um, points being made. Um, the, um, we need to develop processes to re-phenotype based on genotype. Um, and as our knowledge develops, we need guidelines for reinterpretation of sequencing data and how that will be supported. Uh, we, we have models for initial interpretation and guidelines, but not this reinterpretation aspect, and it's something NHGRI may want to consider um, for CSER, or CSER may want to consider. And then there were a range of clinical needs. Um, one was whether or not there should be a comprehensive gene list. I know the UK has created a medically actionable genome uh, that it uses, at least in one of the uh, centralized laboratories in the UK. And so I think CSER looking at a more comprehensive gene list than disease specific so we can be more global in what we're sequencing if we are going to use a gene list. And I also heard arguments about exome and genome sequencing being much a much better approach for learning. Um, and so some studies around that might be helpful. Um, and then holes need somatic variant interpretation and database. That's um, uh, not being addressed as well. Physician education, clearly. Um, and then integration of genome level data into the EHR. So those were some clinical needs. Thank you all, and we'll turn it over to the next group. Great, thanks to those on the Interpreting Variants panel. So next we have Assessing Clinical Utility, moderated by Mary Relling and Arul Chanayan, um, with talks given by Robert Green and Ewan Ashley. And if I could just make a comment to um, those who want to ask questions, please make sure to introduce yourself so we know who you are and can capture it on the, on the, on the webcast. Um, Thank you. <laughs> 